Hey guys, what's going on? It is Dylan with a DJI Mavic Pro tutorial video. Um, it's a beautiful February day here in Southwest Oklahoma. And guys, I have finally given in and I have downloaded the Lychee app and I am really pumped up and excited about many of its features. So I may just have to do um, a few upcoming tutorials um, using the Lychee app. Now do keep in mind also guys, I'm 90% sure on this but I'm pretty sure that um, the Lychee app works with pretty much all the DJI drones such as the Phantom 3 Standard, the Advanced, the Pro, the 4K, the 4, the 4 Pro, and probably both of the Inspires. I'm like 90%, maybe even 95% sure that Lychee works with all the DJI drones. So this isn't necessarily just for the Mavic Pro, so um, just keep that in mind, guys. So anyways, one of the first things you're probably thinking is, is, well, for those of you who have watched, you know, a lot of my previous um, tutorial videos, you're probably thinking, wow, he finally gave in and he started using a screen recording program on his phone to show us, um, you know, what the app's doing. Guys, the deal is, is I have an iPhone 7 Plus and you guys know how Apple is. They're hard headed. At this point, to my knowledge, Apple um, doesn't have, without jailbreaking a phone, which I haven't done, um, I don't think they have any programs that allow you to do like a video screen recording like the Android devices do, but Lychee itself allows you to do that. So anyways, that's why you're going to be able to see um, what my Lychee app interface looks like. Yes, I'm still on an iPhone, but I'm in Lychee, which allows screen recording. So anyways, I'm excited guys because what we are doing today is we are going to do what's called a tiny planet photo. Now, Tiny Planet is just a um, photo style. You're going to need a panorama program or application that stitches, you know, several photos together. And so anyways, the well, first thing we got to do is, is we just have to get several photos in 360 degrees pretty much to allow the stitching program to have photos to work with. So let's now switch to the Lychee app. Let's get the drone launched and I will show you guys how the Lychee app can automatically take your photos for you. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is obviously just launch your drone by hitting on the left side, the bottom icon, the little green uh, circle with the three arrows pointing up, and we will launch our drone. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna to wanna to fly it to where we think um, we can get a good collection of 360 planet um, photos. Now what I will tell you guys on these 360 uh, planet photos, it looks really neat if you have an object sticking up above the horizon, such as this water tower. So I'm gonna position my camera. What, I'm, what I mean is, see how the tower is above the horizon? I'm gonna go up here, and now you will see the water towers below the horizon. I mean, you can do a 360 um, planet photo edit, um, like that, but I'm telling you guys if you have a tall building or tower or some something around that you can put above The horizon it looks cool and you're gonna see why here in just a little bit when I get when I get um, to the computer and um, Show you guys what I mean when I get into my um, Photo stitching software and you see the end result So we're just gonna position it right here and it doesn't really matter the angle on your gimbal like up or down because the panorama shooting setting in the Lychee app will take care of that. Okay guys, so we're ready. We've tapped to focus. We're gonna go up to the upper left and hit FPV. And then you will see Pano. You're gonna click on Pano, and then on the left you'll see like the little white smartphone or tablet icon with the little blue sprocket. You're gonna click on that. Now here are the settings I used. I know you could probably just do four rows which will take a collection of 34 photos, but I go ahead and bu I bump it up to five rows, and that, I believe, will take 42 photos automatically. Like, literally, you, you scroll down these settings. Here's the settings, so you guys can pause the video if you need to to look at these settings. I'll scroll down slow. And then I'm gonna hit the start button and literally set the controller down, and it takes a little while, but the drone is going to, like, rotate around and the camera is going to tilt and it's going to take a collection of 42 different photos all on its own so i'm going to click start a tap to center focus and it's doing its own thing now 
We'll speed it up for you guys so it won't take so long. Panorama ended. Okay guys, now that um, it's taken all 42 photos, you saw the, there was a countdown there that showed how many photos it was taken. It told me, as you heard, panorama ended, so I'm gonna click at the top, upper left corner where it says pano, and I'm gonna switch my mode back to FPV, and I am simply going to come land the drone. Okay guys, so now that we have the drone landed, we're gonna pack up and I'm gonna to head to my iMac and I'm going to show you guys um, how to use software to stitch and create the tiny planet. Okay guys, so now we're here at my iMac. I apologize to PC users. Um, I'm a uh, Mac user. Do a lot of graphic design, video, media work. Um, so, you know, Apple's really awesome for that stuff. But anyways, the stitching program that I'm going to be using is called I think it's called Hugin is how you pronounce that it may be um, Huggin but I would assume it's Hugin like a huge photo it's a Hugin so anyways that's kind of my guess um, I'm not sure if they have this for PC or not you guys can do a search this is a free program uh, if you just type it in you can find it um, somewhere on the internet for free and um, it works really it, it works pretty well it's pretty solid sometimes it's a little hit or miss but for the most part it does a really good job stitching um, photos such as what we we're about to be doing here in a little bit to um, as I show you guys how to make the 360 degrees um, tiny planet photo I'm not sure there's there's plenty of photo stitching programs for um, PC um, you could probably find some and the lingo and terminology is pretty much universal when it comes to these um, you know pano stitching photo stitching programs so anyways guys, I'm just um, if you're on a PC, hopefully they have this program. If not, um, there's there's very similar probably even probably better ones. And um, like I said, the, the terminology is all pretty universal, so you'll probably be able to figure it out. So the first thing we're going to do is when we launch up, we're in the assistant tab, as you'll see here where my mouse is. We're going to go over here and we're going to hit load images. Now, what I went ahead and did is you can see that I've already made a um, folder here called Tiny Planet, and there's nothing in there except for those 42 photos that we just took. And so what we're going to do is, is we're going to highlight all of them, and then we're going to hit Open. And then at that point, it takes a little bit. And um, I'm not really sure what this process is and what it's doing. It's just kind of loading the photos into the program. Um, I think it's just kind of a random deal, but as you'll see, it's kind of like glitching or loading or doing something. I wait till this point here where you see that's not going on anymore. Well, I say that. And, okay, and then the next thing you're going to want to do is click on align here at number two. Now it is done aligning the photos, and um, it may or may not do you know a really well job, but for the most part, this program seems to do. Um, a decent job at you know stitching the photos together it may not always be absolutely perfect but um, of course and also that took about that was about a five minute process waiting um, for them to align those photos stitching them all together I obviously went ahead and skipped forward um, so you guys wouldn't have to sit there and be bored to tears while it was doing it so anyways now that we have aligned our photos we're going to go over here to move and drag 
which allows you to click and kind of move stuff around. And as you'll see, it's upside down, and I'm not really sure. Sometimes it does it upside down, sometimes it doesn't. But if you'll kind of just um, click anywhere in this, you know, up here or towards the center and just drag down, and then you'll get it to looking, you know, more like, you know, what's more normal looking to us. But um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this water tower to more of the center, as you'll see this little line here um, that, you know, signifies the center of the picture. And then um, there's another line that goes like this, and I just try to straighten it up the best I can. It's really kind of unnecessary for this, um, the tiny planet look that we're going for. But now where we're going to go from here is after I do that, I always click straighten. And I'm not sure, yeah, it just kind of straightens it out. And then what you're going to want to do from there is I believe you go to projection up here. And by default, it's on this, and so you're going to click this down, and the planet, the th to do the tiny planet, we're going to click on Stereo Graphic. And sometimes it does this. It's really weird. Like, I don't know what's the deal. Sometimes I just have to, like, I don't know if this program's just glitchy or what. But again, I'm going back to pr uh, Projection, Stereo Graphic, and there it goes. So I don't know what the deal with the glitch on that is. So anyways, guys, you go to Projection tab. Um, if it doesn't work the first time, go to a different tab, then go back and then click down. It's, you know, normally on that, you go to stereo graphic. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to go back to move and drag. And you're going to want to come over here in the bottom right as I did. This is kind of strange. But you, okay, so you just kind of click and drag around until you see, and then I'll, I'll zoom in here, I'll go back down here, until you see what looks like the tiny planet. Um, with the blue sky all around and what you want to try to do is is you want to try to get an even amount of blue sky all around just as I have done and then um, also um, as you'll see the water tower I, I sometimes I mean it, it's it this is all just opinionative it's it's whatever you want to do um, instead of it just being on the very top I think it kind of looks good for it to be off at an angle a little bit not dead center Maybe something like that looks pretty cool. But anyways, again, then once you get, get it to about where you want it, you want to try to move it around and tweak it until you have pretty much an even amount of blue sky all around the photo. So let's see. still looking off a little bit. doesn't have to be perfect. It's just however what looks good to you guys. So I'm going to call that good right there. And then, of course, this down here, you can just, that's your zoom and all that good stuff. So anyways, if you'll remember, I told you it's really cool when you have stuff that's above the horizon, and this is why. Look how cool it looks for that water tower to be popping off, you know, where the blue sky's behind it, it's above the horizon. If we would have took the drone up higher and it was angling down, the photo of the water tower would be down here below the horizon, it wouldn't be popping out. So anyways, that's simply what I meant by it's really cool if you have buildings, trees, or structures that are sticking up above the horizon line because you get this water tower what it looks like it's popping off. So anyways guys, we're good with that. Looks great. And then what you're going to do from that point is um here in the move and drag tab, if you'll go to pitch and you'll type in 9 and hit apply, that just kind of um helps with the pitch. Actually, I should have told you guys to do that before you started uh, moving it around, but you can do it afterwards and, and but anyways, pitch on the move drag tab to 9 and then apply. And then again, just kind of move around, get it to where there's your, your planet is about in the middle of this blue. And then you're going to go over to crop. And then I always do the HDR auto crop. And what that will do is that will crop it as big as it possibly can be where all four, um, where, you know, where there's no black in it. It's just all sky. HDR auto crop. And then we're going to go back to the assistant up here. And now we're ready for number three, create panorama. And just fair warning, this takes a while to do. Um, I always change it to JPEG on the LDR format. And then this is a huge, entirely too huge panorama. So I always change it to about 3,600 pixels wide. And then what that'll do is that'll, after you click down here on quality, it'll automatically adjust, adjust your height to be in the right... Um, you know the right um, proportion to where it won't be stretched or you know distorted and then hey why not let's take this up to a hundred um, and then you click OK 
and then you have to you you need to save a project file before it can do the JPEG. So we'll just save it right there as a PTO file. That's simply the program file for Hugin. And then we're going to name this um, Randlet Park World. And I'm putting the the finished JPEG, the flattened um, Tiny Planet, in my Tiny Planet folder where my original 42 images are that we took. And I hit save. And then this guys takes quite a while. Um, it takes a lot of time. It's sitting here doing all this stuff, all this hard work that we don't have to do. So it's an awesome program. And um, we'll just sit here and I'll wait and let it go through this. And I'll skip forward. Okay, guys, and I believe we are done. Um, the box went away, and so I'm going to get out of Hugin. And now we're going to go click on our tiny planet um, folder. I'm going to open this up and expand it. And let's see what we have here. And as you'll see right here, we have Ranlet Park World.jpg. I'm just going to put some final, it's not necessary, it's done, but I'm going to put some final touches on it um, in Photoshop. Okay, guys, so now that we have it open in Photoshop, the first thing I like to do is um, I like to um, crop it to where it's pretty much a perfect square, um, or, or, you know, closer to where it's about the even amount of blue lines um, around it. It's kind of different in this one. Um, it's kind of a uni unique case because of how high the water tower is sticking out. But I'm looking at my distance on the left from the planet, <laughs> I guess you'd call it, um, to the edge, and then the right side, and then the bottom. I think I want to go down a little lower over here. Um, looking at my left, that looks about even. I'll go up a little bit more. Let's call it good. And then I'm just going to hit, I'm going to cut it. Um, Command X on the app, and then I always just do File New, um, OK, and then Paste, and then just boom, it's right there. I uh, always do an Image Auto Tone, Image Auto Contrast, and then I use Topaz Labs, lots of filters and good stuff like that. And um, what I'm going to do is I go down and I just kind of gives it a more, not necessarily a cartoonish look, but just kind of to enhance it, make it look pretty cool and pop a little more. Um, I do a denoise. Um, Topaz Labs denoise package. So I'll wait for that to load and then I'm going to give it about a moderate change. And see, guys, this is what I'm talking about right here. You'll see it didn't perfectly stitch the edge of this building to right here. But I mean, whenever you're looking at the whole image, um, you, you really can't tell really all that good because your eyes automatically drawn to this water tower. Um, and then there's a little old radio tower over here that's sticking up and um, it's pretty cool stuff so we're waiting for it to denoise here and again this is absolutely unnecessary you don't have to do this um, the photo is pretty good as it is um, when it first comes off but I always gussy it up polish it up just a little bit in Photoshop before having it done and then I go back to Topaz again and I'm going to do an adjust filter in their preset called photo pop I believe it is okay so photo pop And um, that kind of just gives it a little bit of a pop look. Like if you, if you hold down and click on this Topaz stuff, that's what it originally looks like. Let go, that's what the pop looks like. And of course you can come over here and you can mess with some stuff. It's getting a little too sharp for my liking. Um, go down the color, kind of mess with some of that. And it looks pretty good. So we'll say OK. And then we're going to hit File, Save As, and we will call it um, first of all, I'm going to save it as a JPEG, and I'm going to call it Ranlet Park World. Ranlet Park Tiny World. And then, guys, that is pretty much it. Let's close out, and I will leave you guys with just a full photo here of our tiny planet that we just created with our DJI Mavic Pro using the Litchi app.